It is now 11 o'clock. Let us put, turn off our cell phones and put our mind on worship. You'll open your hymn books and turn to page 64. Please stand.
Now it's time for our call to worship. Arise, shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on the nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. But the twos of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Miriam and Epith. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and franchise. They shall proclaim the grace of the Lord. Our affirmation of faith, Apostles' Creed, United Methodist number 881. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Make up heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the Holy Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, made and buried, and the third day he rose from the dead, and sinned in the heaven, and sit is at the right hand of God the Father the Almighty, from which he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son. be seated. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Salem United Methodist Church on this January the 5th in the year of our Lord 2020. Welcome to a brand new decade. The year has changed, but the need is still the same. We need to be here just as much today on the first Sunday of 2020 as we had to have been on the first day of 2019 and every year for 155 years before that. So we continue the legacy and we continue to move forward, looking forward and also looking back a little bit. One of the ways that we're trying to build some continuity between the past and the present and the future is with our brand new 2020 version of the Salem Messenger. Amen. Amen. Folks, ask for a written newsletter and here it is. Every month, we'll have a new copy of the uh, Salem Messenger. It'll have some tidbits on the front and information on the back. On the back, uh, there's also on the, on the table in the foyer is um, a document that we're using to help us with this newsletter, and it is the Annual Calendar of Health Awareness Months. Health Awareness Months. We are, because Sister um, Linda Green came to me uh, in my office and said that I want to do something to help um, Salem United Methodist Church, especially as it concerns our health and wellness at the church. 
Because, you know, she just passed, and at the time she was going through chemotherapy, and she wanted to find a way to help church members as it concerns health. And I told her that we would definitely do something. We started a monthly health emphasis, and that continues on in the newsletter now with the monthly health emphasis being a part of that monthly newsletter. So you'll be able to see all of the different month awarenesses, um, uh, all the different health awareness months that there are on the calendar when you pick up that piece of paper off of the uh, table, and that'll give you kind of a guideline of things that you need to be aware of over the year. Of course, we can't highlight everything on every month, but we'll pick one or two of them, and we'll bring your attention to it, and you already know where uh, the rest of those months are located, so you'll have that piece of paper with you. And the whole idea is that in 2020, we want to be healthier as a church and as individuals than we were in 2019. Amen? Amen. We, wanna, we want to affect good health in, at Salem United Methodist Church. That has to do with our bodies, but it also has to do with our minds and our souls as well. So we're going to try to integrate all of our, the things that we are together. And this newsletter is one way that we are responding to the, to the needs of the church with the, the requests that have been made at the pastor's office and providing this document to help us out. Um, today we have um, Sister Aisha behind me sneezing. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> she is um, running the console on the, did, were you able to, to get that video? Okay. So uh, she's running the, the, what you see on the screen there. And what you see on the screen is also currently now going live on uh, our YouTube page. So people at home were able to see what's going on in the worship service. And not only the people at home, like Sister Looper, I know that she's one of the people who, who regularly uh, hits that site, but folks from all over the country are um, um, peeking in and seeing what's going on at Salem United Methodist Church. The goal is to have more things going on at church so that we'll have more stuff to put on the screen and more stuff for people to come and join. Right? Like a, like a, a vicious fruitfulness cycle. You know, the more we do, the more we show, and the more we show, the more we receive, and then the more we're able to do again. And it keeps growing and growing and growing. It's been very successful so far, and we hope that it will continue to do so. All of the meetings that have been postponed and uh, put, uh, canceled during the Christmas holidays are back on again in January. Amen. All right? Everything from United Methodist men's meeting to anniversary to ushers to, to um, Sunday school Bible study. Um, we have a Tuesday afternoon Bible study at 1 o'clock. We're going to be starting a brand new um, book in that, um, in that study. So at the beginning of the year is a great time to make a commitment to make it to some Bible study. And we have plenty of places where you can come and study the word of God. And we'll also be coming up with new events and new places where that can get done. Those are the announcements for today. And now we move on to the welcoming period. Um, later on in the worship service, we're going to be, um, uh, our officers will be taking the oath of office for, two, for 2020. And um, so uh, that's not going to happen right now. We're going to do it a little bit later on in the worship service. Um, but right now, what we're about to do is what we like to call the greeting period. This is the time when we get up, move around, shake hands, and greet people back into the worship space here at Salem United Methodist Church. And why is that important? Besides getting us up and stretching our legs and getting to meet other people and, and to connect, what we are doing is exactly what the Bible commands that we do. It's not a suggestion. It's not, it's not a tip. Jesus commands that you love one another. It's a commandment. He says that you are to, don't worry about those enemies out there. Don't worry about those other folks. 
Jesus says, they will know that you are Christians by the way that you love other Christians who are sitting in the pews next to you on Sunday morning. And if you can do that, Jesus says, what we are doing is we are showing forth the kingdom of God. We are acting like it's going gonna, it's gonna to be when Jesus comes back for himself to claim Salem United Methodist Church for his own. And what's he going to see? People with smiles on their faces, Amen. happy to see one another, touching and greeting one another and welcoming them into the worship service with the same love that God used when he woke you up this morning and brought you into this worship service today. That's a wonderful thing to share, isn't it? So let's share it with one another right now. Get up, move around, and welcome everyone home to Salem United Methodist Church.
Many people know that God is not just some of the things, not even most of the things, but everything. Amen. God is everything. God owns everything. And in the United Methodist Church, we exercise stewardship over all of those things. We exercise stewardship over it 
in the clergy, but most of all, we op exercise stewardship over it in our lay leadership. The laity of the United Methodist Church are just not people who sit in the pews. They're just not the members of the church. In the United Methodist Church, the laity is imbued with a great power, a lot of power, more power than the pastor. And so for that reason, it's important that those non-clergy members of Salem United Methodist Church accept the calling to a holy and a sacred priesthood that priesthood of all believers and in that priesthood we all have a role to play we all have jobs to do and therefore we have a book of discipline that prescribes that at the beginning of every year a new slate of officers are elected and at the duly appointed time they take an oath of office. Now this oath of office isn't designed to bind you in a legal sense. But it is designed to convict your heart of the things that we expect from our leaders. We expect leaders to come to church. We expect leaders to show up on time for meetings. We expect leaders to be examples of financial stewardship and extravagant generosity. But most of all, we expect our leaders to pray. You have to have a relationship with God if you want a lay leadership position at Salem United Methodist Church. Because unless I see that in you, I am not going to appoint you to an office at this church. Amen. Unless I see your walk with Christ, I'm not going to vouch for you and your commitment to this great congregation because the stakes are too high. Do you see all the babies we got in the sanctuary this morning? That's what this is about. Generation after generation of people showing up, showing up on time, being extravagantly gener generous with their time and their money, and leading this great and historic congregation called Salem. So... This year's slate of officers, you know who you are. Would you all please stand where you are, wherever you are in the sanctuary. Just stand at your seats, wherever you are. Amen. <laughs> Dear friends. You have been called by God and chosen by the people of God for leadership in the church. This ministry is a blessing and a serious responsibility. It recognizes your special gifts and calls you to work among us and for us. In love, we thank you for accepting your obligation and challenge you to offer your best to God to this people, and to our ministry in, to, in this world. Live a life in Christ and make him known in your witness and your work. Today we will install these people and I am going to um, read an affirmation and if you agree, I'm going to ask you to respond. Do you this day acknowledge yourself as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ? If you do, say, I do. I do. Will you devote yourself to the service of God in this world? If you will, say, I will. I will. will you so live 
that you enable this church to be a people of love and peace. If you will say, I will. Will you do in all your power or will you do all in your power to be, uh, be responsible to the task for which you have been chosen? If you will, say, I will. I we also recognize these people who have been elected into office in the United Methodist men and the United Methodist women and the United Methodist uh, youth. Let us pray. Almighty God, pour out your blessings upon these, your servants, who have been given particular ministries in your church. Grant them peace to give themselves wholeheartedly in your service. Keep before them the example of our Lord. He did not think first of himself, but gave himself for us all. Let them share his ministry and his consecration that they may enter into his joy. Guide them in their work. Reward their faithfulness with the knowledge that through them your purposes are accomplished. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. And let the church say amen. amen. Now, the rest of you who aren't standing right now, the congregation, I'm going to ask you a question. Dear friends, rejoice that God provided laborers for his vineyard. Will you, congregation of Salem United Methodist Church, do all that you can to assist and encourage these people in their responsibilities to which they have been called, giving them your cooperation, your counsel, and your prayers. If you will, say, I will. Thank you all very much. You all may all be seated. Having consecrated these lay people for the work of 2020, that means they have been anointed and set aside from all other laborers in God's vineyard for the special work here at Salem United Methodist Church. And as the pastor of this congregation, on this very first Sunday of 2020, I want to lead us all in a corporate prayer. <laughs> Ordinarily, we open the communion rail for an altar call and have covenant prayer, but this is a special Sunday, the first Sunday of the year. And our officers have just dedicated themselves, and our congregation has just dedicated itself to helping each other work for God in 2020. Since we've committed, all we need is gas in the tank, and we can get on down the road. So let us all pray together on one accord, on the same page like they did on that first day of Pentecost. And let's see if God will not provide for the, us those things that we can't provide for ourselves. That wind that's going to beneath, be beneath the wings of these lay leaders and indeed this entire congregation for the rest of this year. So if you would, bow your heads and let us pray. Gracious Father, most merciful God in heaven. God, you are God all by yourself. Lord, if we had 10,000 tongues in this building right now, we could not praise you enough for bringing us all the way to 2020. Lord, we thank you for our survival. We thank you for our presence in this world. We thank you for every struggle, for every bump and bruise along the way. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for the ability to pray. So right now, Heavenly Father, as we come before you, lifting up your holy name, Heavenly Father, we ask if now, as if in none, no other time on earth, Lord, that you forgive us all of our sins. Heavenly Father, there are sins that are dwelling and abiding within the hearts of each and every person here. 
Lord, there are sins that we haven't even committed yet, Lord. There are sins being committed in our households, in our schools, in our places of business, in the White House, in Austin, Texas, in Congress, in the legislature, Lord, in the boardrooms of Fortune 500 companies. Lord, we are a sin-sick people, and we need your love. So right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, forgive us of every sin, every thought, and every deed that has brought us away from your glorious love, care, and guidance. Lord, we ask for an added blessing on those who would spitefully seek to hurt us. Because, Lord, you said to pray for our enemies. And right now, Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are training weapons on each other right now in Iran and Iraq and throughout the Middle East. Heavenly Father, please, Father, please spare us from more decades of war and bring peace into this world. A peace that the world can't give us and that the world cannot take away. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, the Prince of Peace, on this first Sunday in 2020. And we ask that peace continue to follow this church and every member in it all the days of our life. But not just peace, Lord, every fruit of the Spirit, the joy, the love, the calmness, the gentleness, the, the self-control, Lord, all those good and, and, and kind and gentle things that spring forward when we rest on you. So right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, we ask a blessing on all of our children as they go back to school. Every teacher and every uh, staffer in the school district, Lord, bless them right now in Jesus' name. Every school bus driver, every first responder in, in Orange County and beyond, Lord, bless them right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask for a blessing to, on our sick and shut-in right now, those who aren't able to make it in the worship service, but who are here in spirit. Lord, bless them right now in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, there are sick and shut-in who got up and came to work, I mean, came to church this morning, Lord. They came in through the pain, through the sorrow, through the anxiety. They came because they love you, Lord. So right now in Jesus' name, we ask for a blessing on everyone within the sound of my voice. A fresh, brand new blessing for 2020. A financial blessing. A physical blessing. A relationship blessing. An employment blessing. A blessing on children and grandchildren and extended relatives all over the world. A blessing on the incarcerated right now and on the addicted and those who need help right now. But most of all, Lord, we ask for your blessing on us here at Salem United Methodist Church in Orange, Texas. Bless our going out and our coming in. Bless every step that we take in the new year and make it prosperous and fruitful for us. Bless all that we say and all that we do. And do it, gracious Father, not so that we can greedily gorge on the blessings that you pour into our lives Lord do it so that someone else can see how good you have been to us and decide that they too want to be children of the most high God Lord let our life and our blessings be a witness of your goodness and your grace and let it shine not just in Orange Texas but all over this world Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this people. Thank you for this new year. Thank you for these children, Lord. And most of all, Lord, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Because it is through him, in him, and with him that we are your children. Called together by your name. And let the church say, Amen. amen. And Amen.
God. Yes, you know my name. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. You know my name. Oh, Father God. Yes, you know my name. And oh, how you walk with me. Jesus, you have your way in here today, Holy Ghost. If you want to leave early, get up and go. But the Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. And if you don't feel him, I feel bad for you. Because it's nothing like you. It's nothing like you. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. This is your house, Lord. And you come in and you do what you do best. You show up and you show out, God. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. I thank the Lord, God. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for having your way, God. I thank you for having your way, God. I thank you for having your way, Jesus. prayed all oh, you can pray when you done cried all oh, you can cry you don't talk to your friends about it you don't talk to your enemies about it you can't find your way turn your head up and tell him have your way Lord have your way not my way, Lord, but your way. I can't do it by myself. I done tried. I don't have an answer. I don't know what to do. Turn to him. Have your way, Lord. When you fix it, I know it's fixed, Jesus. When I can't stand no more. When my heart is too heavy. 
Well, I can't call nobody. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Children, one day you gonna understand mom and daddy ain't gonna be there always. You got to know who God is. When mom and daddy gone and you're in this world by yourself, God will always be there. Standing beside you. Just waiting. Waiting on you to say, Lord, have your way. Have your way. It's now time for the children. I would tie in angels. How did I make it all these years? How did I make it this far? Through the valleys and over the hills I know it had to be God How did I make it through the storms? How did I make it through the rain? Yes, Lord. If you want to know just how I got here, it's so easy to explain. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. You see, I made it. God's grace. God's grace. It was God's grace. 
It's time for our prayer of illumination. God, our helper, by your Holy Spirit, open our minds that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may be led into your truth and taught your will for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from Matthew, second chapter, verses 1 through 12. Matthew, second chapter, verses 1 through 12. And it reads, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, who had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into that, the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. God bless the readings and the hearing of his holy words. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, good afternoon, one more time. Just after 12 noon. Um, this is Epiphany Sunday in our liturgical calendar. Epiphany Sunday is the day that, as uh, Sister Rochelle so eloquently read, represents the time that we remember the three wise men. It's about remembering the three wise men. I think I may be causing a little. Is that better? All right. The story of the Magi of the three wise men is often associated with Christmas, isn't it? When you think about it, you think about the nativity scene. Theologians agree that the, that the visit described in Matthew's second chapter did not happen on the night that Jesus was born. Amen. All right? This didn't happen like you see on the nativity scene with Everybody gathered around that little manger. The traditional Christmas nativity scene might not be a literal snapshot of what happened in that stable in Bethlehem on December 25th in the year zero. But Matthew tells us that they just didn't enter into a stable to see an infant. Rather, they entered into a house 
to see a child with his mother. That tells us that it appears that there's been some time that had passed between the time that those wise men first saw Jesus' star rising at his birth and the time that they appeared in Jerusalem on their search for the king of the Jews. Now, assuming that the star first appeared when Jesus was born, we can assume that it was about two years between the time that Jesus' star rose and the time that the wise men appeared. And I'm pointing all this out about this common biblical misrepresentation of the nativity scene because I want to explore a completely different question. I want to know who the magi of today are. Who are today's magi? Who are those wise men and women of 2020? I have a suspicion about who I think they are, and I wanna, but I want to bounce it off of you first. And I want to know if there are some wise men and women who seek out the Lord Jesus Christ for themselves anymore. And I want to know who will use their gifts and graces consistently over time in order to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And finally, I want to know who is so filled with so much joy at finding Jesus that they pay homage to the Son of God, to the King of Kings with their extravagantly generous gifts. And I want to discuss all of that. Today's diligent, dedicated, and devoted men, wise men and women of God in a sermon that I've entitled The Modern Magi. The Modern Magi. Let us pray. Gracious Father, most merciful God in heaven, Lord, we love you, we lift you up, and we magnify your holy name. But today, Heavenly Father, at this time, we need to hear a word from you. So remove this messenger, Lord, and leave standing here in his place, Lord, your good, your true, and your perfect word for your people. So that when we all leave the sanctuary today, we will leave with that blessed assurance that your glory and your glory alone has been shown for. And that indeed your goodness, your grace, and your mercy will continue to be manifested in our lives. This and all other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. The modern magi. I looked it up. Magi means uh, wise men. And it's the plural of the word magus. I just say that to make myself sound smart. But now you know also. All right? The Magi or a bunch of Magicists. And on this Epiphany Sunday, the first Sunday of 2020, the message for today is simple. You are the modern Magi. You, Salem United Methodist Church of 2020, you are the modern Magi. I believe that Today's gospel lectionary reading has evidence that the members of Salem United Methodist Church are indeed the modern magi. And I want to give you the bottom line up front at the beginning of this service, at the beginning of this sermon, because I know last Wednesday was New Year's Eve and some of you may still be recovering from that. And I may not have you for the whole time of the sermon. So if you were bound to go to sleep, you can go ahead to sleep now. That's the message right there. We're all the magi. Amen. Now, for the rest of you, I want to make a case that beginning right here in 2020, this, that we are the 2020 version of those wise men, uh, the magi that are in this scripture, the second chapter of Matthew. And, and I want to start with the first two verses, Matthew 2, verses 1 and 2. The first scripture is clear that the time, first, the scripture in this that we're reading here is clear that, that the time after Jesus was born, that there was a, a little time that had passed between the time of this scripture and the time that Jesus is born. You've also, uh, you, you also, those of us who are here today, we live in a time long after Jesus was born, but 
The scripture says that the people who came looking for Jesus were from the east. Doesn't give a specific com- country, but from the east. Now, I have a question for you. What is the last exit going east on I-10 before you leave the state of Texas? Orange, Texas. You can't get no further east in Texas than Orange, Texas. Amen? Amen. Amen. Especially as it concerns the Texas Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. Salem is always coming from the east when we go to annual conference. Amen? Amen? Salem members have more than a geographic similarity to those those folks back in Herod's time because in verse 2, it describes men who were educated in astrology. Now, astrology is this ancient science that's still around today. You've heard about zodiac signs and stuff about that, but, but it represented the science of the day, and that science was beyond the knowledge of King Herod. They were able to use their knowledge and wisdom to follow their dreams, those wise men. And the members of Salem United Methodist Church, we are also very highly educated, skilled, and knowledgeable people who have been blessed. Also, like the biblical magi, we modern magi use our gifts and graces to seek the face of Jesus Christ. And we do it with joyful expectation, just like those biblical magi did. We are willing to pack up and travel just to see Jesus. We're willing to speak truth to power and to powerful people just to serve Jesus. And when we find Jesus, We are filled with joy, just like those biblical magi were. And when when they found that that house where that child named Jesus lived, they were, the Bible says, filled. Not just topped off, but filled to overflowing with joy. What's the last time you were filled with overflowing with joy? The modern magi are also like the biblical magi in that when they were filled with joy for finding Jesus, they gave extravagantly in homage to the Son of God. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh, that was some expensive stuff back then. Of course, the biblical magi didn't know that Jesus was the Son of God, but they knew that Jesus was a king. And when the ancient people pay homage to a king, you could not be cheap about it. You couldn't be cheap because it could be considered an insult if you came half-stepping with your gifts to the king. Ancient people paid homage to a king. That meant that they were going to give as much as they could because they know that the whole idea was to impress the royal leader with, with this extravagant gift that came from the heart. Something that really meant something to you. And Salem members are just like those wise men in the Bible because when they give to God, they do so with a cheerful and joyful heart. I know because I've seen it. And why do you give like that, Salem? Year after year, joyfully giving. Why do you do it? Well, wise men and women know that if, if, if they are authentic and sincere with their enthusiasm when they present a gift, the person who receives that gift will also be authentically and genuinely happy about receiving it. Only foolish men and women believe that a half-hearted gift receives a whole-hearted reception. And if you don't want God to budget your blessings, don't budget God's giving. See, Magi know how to bless the king from the heart. That's the key to really, really, really want to do it inside. That's the key. So the Magi use their unique unique gifts of knowledge and wealth to seek out and to bless the Lord Jesus Christ. 
The Bible says they did it because they were filled with joy and not out of obligation. I'm going to say it one more time. They gave not because they felt like they were supposed to. They gave because they wanted to because it was a joy to do it. When I look at today's gospel lectionary re reading, I see the men and women of Salem United Methodist Church as we face a brand new decade right here. I see the modern magi. You see, the biblical magi were, were learned in the knowledge of their day. But Salem, we're knowledgeable about things going on today. As a congregation, we are well represented in the fields of education and engineering, business, and politics. You can't swing a stick in at Salem without hitting a highly educated Negro, can you? That means that we have a wealth of knowledge that other people don't have. Just like the biblical magi had knowledge that King Herod didn't have. People who have reached leadership levels of professional expertise deserve to be compensated accordingly because they earned it. When you have knowledge that's unique to you, other people don't have you deserve to be compensated well because financial wealth comes with that kind of expertise you have earned it everybody can have what you got and so when you have worked hard and you have sacrificed and you have invested to build a wealth of knowledge in yourself and you start to be to be rewarded for it in your life well then, just like the biblical magi had gold, frankincense, and myrrh, we also enjoy nice things. All the nice things that we can afford right here at Salem United Methodist Church. And as learned people, we are like those biblical magi because we don't because if we don't know something, we know how to find out. The biblical magi went directly to Jerusalem to King Herod, who in turn went to his top advisors to find out that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. That's how the magi found out where Jesus was. They went directly to the seat of power and they weren't afraid to ask. The biblical magi knew how to get things done. So do we. Us modern magi here at Salem, I've seen you do it. We also know how to call City Hall or, or the governor's off, office in Austin to get things done in our neighborhood right here in Orange, Texas. And just like the biblical magi, we modern magi are not only effective, but we are powerful when we stay true to what we know. The biblical magi heard that Herod told them about Bethlehem. Then they went back and followed the star that had brought them all the way from home. The modern magi are also diligent and consistent when applying their gifts and graces in the pursuit of glorifying God. You just can't stop just because it gets hard. You can't stop because somebody's in your way. You got to keep on pushing and go back to what you know and lean on that. And that's what these, these biblical magi did. The biblical magi had this, this gold and frankincense and myrrh, but us modern magi, we have the gift of our stewardship. Biblical magi recognized the king uh, as the uh, Jesus as the king of uh, kings, and they, and they paid homage to him with a joyful and, and, a, and in an extravagant way. And us modern magi at Salem, we're no different. Inside the biblical, inside the, the biblical magi was a deep and sincere, authentic feeling of joy when they found Jesus, just like the saints of Salem love Jesus and they have joy when they see Jesus too because you know some both the biblical magi and the modern magi know the same joy and love shown toward Jesus because I've seen you all engage Jesus for yourself wise men and women of today that if they have to if you had to pay 
for eternal life. If you had to pay never ever to know pain or suffering or death again, how much would you pay? You don't have enough money, do you? You couldn't buy it. You don't have enough. If you had to pay to wake up for just one more morning, and somebody said, you got one more morning, but, but you need to pay for it. How, what account would you not close out? What would you not liquidate? You would pay everything that you had if it, if it would get you one more day, wouldn't you? If you had to put a dollar figure on, on being able to dress yourself and to live independently and to come and worship God when you get good and ready to, could you pay it? Could you meet that dollar figure? We would pay whatever it takes to keep on seeing our children and our grandchildren, to keep on seeing our friends and our family and our church members. We, we would pay whatever it costs. But here's the trick. You can't pay for none of those blessings. There's no price on that. Wise men and women know that they all come as a gift from God whose son, is Jesus Christ. The modern magi give out, give, give out the joy that they feel so that they can give more to those who gave out of obligation. Modern magi feel that joy for Jesus so much that they give because they know that they're not obligated to. They want to. And that's the, the saints of Salem United Methodist Church. Modern Magi give out of joy, not out of obligation. Modern Magi already know that not everyone who says they want to pay homage to Jesus Christ truly intend to do the same things that we intend to do. King Herod said that he wanted to pay homage to Jesus, but just like the devil, all he wanted to do was to kill, steal, and destroy. And you got to watch out for that in your life too. Modern magi stay in the will of God, just like the biblical magi did. And they were able to discern the proper road to take out of that dangerous situation when they left visiting Jesus. We modern magi are, 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 are knowledgeable, but we don't always lean into our own understanding. We are attentive to God speaking to us, even in dreams sometimes. We listen to what God is telling us and we adapt to the will of God and what God is trying to say. We are the modern magi at Salem United Methodist Church. And we're not ashamed of our education and we'll not let anyone shame us about knowing something that other people don't. We've been blessed as wise men and women in 2020 because being educated and, and learned is a blessing that bears fruit. It bears the fruit of wealth and financial reward, and we're eager to share those. We come as, from as far in the west as Texas, in Texas as you can get, and, and when we have to get back home by an alternate route, just like the, just like the Magi in our story, God will show up and show us a whole other way to get home. It don't even matter how much flooding there is. We are the modern magi. We are diligent. We are dedicated and devoted. We give out of joy and not out of obligation. We are filled with joy when we come to Salem because for some of us, this is where we first met Jesus. For others of us, this is where we come to expect to see Jesus every Sunday morning we come to worship. There are even some of us modern magi who are sitting right here today who are filled with joy every time they come to Bible study, every time they come to Sunday school or, or to a special service like the Christmas cantata. I know that there are modern magi at Salem who joyfully see Jesus' face when they are here mowing the grass and nobody is here to see him, when they're here decorating the sanctuary for whatever season it happens to be when they're participating in one of those endless anniversary meetings or, or, or usher meetings or trustee meetings. They're filled with joy when they're visiting the sick and shut-in. And 
and bringing them communion. Modern magi joyfully visit nursing homes and spread Christmas cheer. Modern magi provide water for students at the West Orange Stark High School Band. Modern magi show up and volunteer when backpacks are being distributed or for vacation Bible school. Modern magi pay their anniversary assessment early and then they keep on giving and don't stop just because they reach their $155. Modern magi are Salem United Methodist Church members. Therefore, if anyone should celebrate the epiphany, it should be us. If anyone should, should relate to today's gospel scripture, it ought to be the members of Salem United Methodist Church. And if anyone needs an example of joyful giving to Jesus, they only need to look at you. The modern magi. A Salem United Methodist Church. And they'll see that model of giving, of dedication, of the joy that comes when you find Jesus. Because after you find Jesus, you got solutions. <laughs> right now we got problems. I know I got problems. The first Sunday of the year, <laughs> I got all kind of problems. But as long as I got Jesus, I can call the creditor when they, before they call me. As long as I got Jesus. I, I can get my assignments done before the due date as long as I got Jesus. I can do the things that my doctor tells me to do before he tells me I got to do them when I got Jesus. And all throughout 2020, people will be looking at you because you're the modern magi. And they know that you have Jesus too. Now, if you've got this knowledge, if you've got this joy of stewardship that the first Magi had, then you are Salem United Methodist Church and you have been blessed. And as your pastor, I forbid you to hold those blessings selfishly to yourself. You can't do it. Don't put it in the bank. Don't put it under your, your mattress. Don't go bury it out in the backyard. Take this blessing and go bless somebody else with it. That's how more blessings come. When you get rid of the old blessings, there's room for more blessings. And God just keeps filling up more and more and more. That's what we're experiencing at Salem. And that's what we're experiencing now when we open the doors of the church. We have been blessed so we got to bless somebody else. So I invite you all to stand right now, wherever you are, in solidarity with someone who's looking for a new church home, somebody who may need to be baptized, or somebody who just needs to fellowship with the family of God. The doors of the church are open. We be blessed. And find peace and sweet rest. Give him your body and soul. Amen. Good morning. How you doing, Nicole? Good. What brings you up? Oh. Wonderful. Well, come on. Wonderful. Oh, the spirit control you can own and find peace and sweet rest as you give him your body and soul. Amen. You may be seated. Our very own Nicole Gidry Nix. Giddy Nix has come um, to rejoin Salem United Methodist Church as a member of this congregation. She also 
wants to serve on the usher board. Amen. And take her spot on the usher board. Amen. So you know what time the usher board meets. The ushers, you all see your new member. Amen. Don't worry. You can't get out of here with running into an usher. We got more ushers than we got members. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm glad all the ushers are members because if they weren't, we wouldn't have no members. All we'd have is ushers. <laughs> so I am so glad. Thank you for coming and joining with us. We'll get you all of the, the paperwork and make sure that you're on the rolls officially. But as the, as the pastor of Salem United Methodist Church, I want to extend this hand of fellowship to you in a good old Baptist tradition that I'm not ashamed to steal for the Methodist, amen, and to welcome you home to Salem United Methodist Church. Everybody say amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. All right. My sister's name is also Nicole, and I had no idea that this Nicole was not already a member of Salem United Methodist Church. That means there may be some other folks out here who pretending to be members, amen? So if you ain't already come on down the aisle like Sister Nicole did and joined up for good, it's a brand new year. Shoot, it's a brand new decade. Let's start the decade off right. Amen? Amen. We're going to be baptizing a baby back there in another few weeks. Another baby. Amen. That's going to be another member of our family growing, growing, and growing. It's a good thing. Now it is time for Holy Communion, as it is the first Sunday of the month. If you will open your hymn to the very front on page 12, you'll see a liturgy entitled A Service of Word and Table Number 2. We're going to be reading that together as we take Holy Communion with one another. I'm going to be reading the light colored text, and if you would not mind, if you would please read. The bold colored text. Once again, starting on page 12, a word of service, a service of word in table number two, beginning with the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Since we passed the peace earlier during the... Um, Welcome period. Let's move on to page 13 and the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. 
By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together in the words that our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And we do have our little fellowship cups, and you all should have received it. Those little packets represent both the body of Christ broken for you and for your sins. And it also represents the blood of Christ that is shed to save the world. All right, everybody take the uh, foil off of the top of your cup. Take the little wafer out. When you have the wafer in your hand, say amen. amen. And that's when I'll say, on the night that our Lord and Savior gave himself up for us, he took the bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I'll peel the purple foil off of the cup. And when you've got enough of it, peel back to drink from the cup, say amen. amen. And then I'll say, on the night after the dinner, he took the cup. He blessed it. Then he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do so as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Communion has been served for the first time in 2020. Amen. 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 As the ushers are coming forward, are going around picking up your empties, I am reminded that the United Methodist men 
will meet on Tuesday, the first Tuesday of the year. Under the leadership of our own Brother Dunning Hunter, they'll be meeting here at the church, right, Brother Hunter? 6 p.m. on Tuesday. 6 p.m. on Tuesday. Um, there was something else. What am I forgetting? January birthdays? And anniversaries? Well, Bella's birthday's in January. Can we skip it this month? Okay, we'll do it anyway. January birthdays. Will you please stand wherever you are? Who was born in January? Oh, happy birthday. Let's sing happy birthday to him. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Now, who got hitched in January? Anybody get married in January? Anybody want to get married in January? We got somebody right there. Oh, there we go. Amen. We're going to sing happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, dear Tiana. Happy anniversary to you. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that we've had this time together, as Carol Burnett used to say. <laughs> All right. With that being said, it's time to go. And I, I know that some of you have already celebrated your playoff win. Some of you are going to be waiting until next year, Dallas Cowboy fans. I'm not calling nobody else out. But that's all right. There's going to be some good games on this weekend. Just because the Cowboys aren't in it don't mean you can't watch football, all right? Amen. <laughs> Will you all please stand for the extinguishing of the candles and remain standing for the benediction? Amen. You're welcome. Let the church say, Amen. God is spoken. Let the church say. Now receive the benediction. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm on your face and the rain fall softly on your fields. And until we meet again, may Almighty God keep you in the palm of his powerful hand. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, let the whole church say amen. 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 God bless you all.